Alrighty, so welcome to the first of a look at how to level up. And I've been messing around with my new date. If you saw my video where I actually the revamp came out, you'll know I got Yashar to the Defiler. So I've been messing around with this. Uh, Headmaster Kel'Thuzad is an interesting combination I found. One of the things I've really noticed is that there is like a... Druid is always the class I go to when an expansion comes out because I just like to see everything and I've got the most cards for Druid in general, I think. So Solar Eclipse and the Lunar Eclipse. There's also a Legendary as well, which is 4 mana 2-2 two, two, that gives you a Solar Eclipse and a Lunar Eclipse. And I've been trying to sort of like work out, with the initial stages, I've been trying to work out the various different combos with these cards. Initially, of course, you want to play Survival of the Fittest and you want to see, okay, is there some way I can do this, make it cost less? But they're actually, the way they're designed is that you'll never be able to actually get this to trigger twice. So that was my initial thought, because you'd have to play the Lightning Bloom, and that would be the one that would be casting twice. Uh, and if you went in from, uh, you know, Lunar Eclipse, you could, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost a, it wouldn't cost a low enough amount, uh, even with Nature Studies, the one reduction. But there are some very interesting ways you can get up to a very high amount of mana very quickly. So you can, you can, for instance. Like some combinations don't really work that well, but like for instance, there's no point doing. I don't know why I'm talking about the ones that don't work. This is this this is how I tend to um, get into new expansions. So this is like an early look at it sort of thing. But like you could do that into Lightning Bloom, but you're only gonna you're still only gonna get the same effect as one Lightning Bloom, which is unfortunate. Um, but. If you do, I guess if you do, I think if you do Lunar Eclipse into Solar into Lightning Bloom, then you will get a four extra. But then again, I mean that I mean that that would get you four mana. But then it would be it would also get you the damage to a minion, so that would actually be a small advantage. I guess that's not really the, the use case of it. But what, as I was mentioning just a, a moment ago with uh, Kelthazad, it's kind of useful to double up the damage. If you do six damage, you'll often especially if you've got some stuff to trade, doing six damage to a minion is uh you know, is, is significant. So you could easily get an eight eight uh from Kelthazad. Now strong strongman is like the card, I guess, which is sort of really like shows you what you can do with the um with the new expansion. This this crap this cost zero thing is pretty is pretty cool. Um so you'd often be able to play this. Uh, one of the other th cards that I noticed that I was playing a lot is the Moon Touched Amulet. So this is is going to straight up kill an eight minion and get twelve armor. Now there may even be like uh, some shield slam effects because there's a lot more armor for Druid now than I guess there were like branching paths. I guess armor's always been a thing for Druid. Not obviously not as much as Warrior, but it's always been a thing. But that's really cool to have that. In general, though, you do just want to get your Sarah. You want to survive the fittest. Um, one of the best combos, the old, in a way, like the ultimate combo. I mean, maybe not, not if you're playing against like Warrior, but against most decks like that you'll play against, would be this Carnival Clown, and because one of the things is like you're not going. It's very difficult to actually trigger the corrupt on this. You have to do it with uh, Survival of the Fittest, really. Um, I mean, of course, you can trigger it with your charge, but then you don't get it back afterwards. So really, you want to wait. Like, if the game is going to a certain extent, that's what I've realized, you may as well just wait, and then you'll be able to get two sets of these out. Um, you know, and there'll be eight. There'll be like eight eights, right? So eight eights with Taunt across the whole board. There will be ways for, you know, Priest to deal with it and, and Warrior to deal with it, but most classes are not going to be able to deal with that. Um but another thing I was mentioning as well is earlier with the uh, mana, like you can get to very high mana very quickly, but the interesting thing that I've just, just again, like just a cursory sort of first look at this is that there are, I mean, like this is like, you know, Lightning Bloom and Overgrowth are very strong cards for mana growth in terms of, you know, what we've had in the past with, you know, Jade Golem or Wild Growth or uh, Breath of Dreams. Um, I've got the name of that right. It's at that, I'm at that point where I don't like to get the names of things wrong. Yeah, I got it correct. And so what you need to do, I think like um, 
But sometimes if you can get to that high mana, but then you might just have turns and turns where you're just not doing much. Because you can look at the mana, like there's 11 cards over seven. I don't know. I mean, you should really be doing stuff on most of those turns. I don't know. Maybe I just got, un maybe I'm just thinking of like this one particular game where I was just, I, I did a very, very fast play to get higher mana. And then I just, and then, and then it literally, and then that was it. Um, I didn't do anything for like a few turns and it, it didn't really work out particularly well. But yeah, I think like if you go for higher mana, you want like overflow because if you're going for higher mana, you're going to be using, you're going to, your hand size is going to dramatically decrease. And you're also going to want survival of the fittest and, and preferably like a big minion. So I put in the, uh, this card, I think it's going to see quite a lot of play. Uh, it's pretty good, really. It's like, you know, it's what, I don't know what the average would be. It's probably like a 14, 14. If you if you if you counter in the uh, the death rattle there, um, and this may actually be useful with death rattle hunter as well as a is a good replacement for some of the other cards that uh, yeah I mean but anyway so umbral owl as well this is like a card doesn't look much on the surface but it, when that's an eight eight with rush that's really strong um, because it's going to cost zero as well so this is like a way. I mean, this is like an extension of the whole like corrupt mechanic, right? That this will probably cost zero as well. Um, but it is quite an interesting new mechanic, I think, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun to see, like, you know, over the next few months, what sort of combos can come out of it. But yeah, just a first look. So thanks for watching.